Hello and welcome, I'm Bertha Stormtrooper and today we're going to be taking a look at the Diamond Select Wave 2 of 7 inch Ghostbusters figures and I love these toys. Now, I found these guys completely unexpectedly. I was actually out hunting for the last of the 30th anniversary reissue figures that are currently hitting stores. And while I was out and about doing my rounds, I came up on these guys. And I was very pleasantly surprised. Now, these are the retail version of these figures. There is a uh, another release of these that are for conventions and for specialty stores that come with pieces that you can put together for uh, to build a diorama once you complete the entire set. This is the retail version, so you're going to get pretty much the exact same thing that you would get with the other versions, except you don't get the diorama pieces with these. I found these at Toys R Us, and they were retailing for about $13 a piece. So, um, real quick, just getting into the packaging, like I mentioned, these are not in boxes. Like the, I, I think the other ones that come with the uh, diorama pieces come in boxes. These actually just come in a card, and as you can see, it's just a green card with kind of like a slime look back there behind the figures, and then the uh, figures themselves are on a bubble, and you can look all the way around on the figure, which is really nice, and you can really appreciate all the detail that went into these guys, and you can see everything that's packed in there with them. Uh, Dana has, you know, a few less accessories than everybody else, but we're going to get into that when we open the figures. The uh, back of the cards have a uh, picture. Actually, let me do this. Let me turn these all of these around. And uh, the back of the cards have a picture or, or more of a close-up picture of the actual figure that you'll get inside, along with a short bio of the character. And then you've got a uh, picture of the other two figures that are included in this wave. So, uh, you've got Peter Venkman, uh, you've got Dana Barrett, and you've got Egon Spengler. I'm giving you guys time if you guys want to pause and, and read these. but uh, And then you can see that they show what the other two figures are. So these are the three figures for this wave. If uh, you want, you're you looking for wave one, there's uh, there's Peter Venkman's uh, bio, if you want to pause it and read it real quick. And then, um, yeah, so this is these are the, thre the three figures for this wave. Uh, wave one included uh, Ray... Winston and also Lois Tully. Unfortunately, I do not have Wave One, um, so I was actually not expecting to find these at retail. So now I have to scramble to try and find Wave One so that I can get my team complete and I can get uh, Lois and uh, Dana together. Uh, now, all in all, the Diamond Select Seven Inch Ghostbusters figures are going to have a total of fifteen figures. There's going to be five waves of three figures each. So uh, right now we're looking at waves one uh, uh, right here in front of us. We're looking at waves two, but we've already had wave one. And I believe wave three is coming out uh, right now as of the time of this recording. So uh, let's get these guys opened up real quick. Kind of do a little bit of an unboxing here. And we'll start with Dana because she has the least amount of accessories. So we'll just get her out of the packs. And then uh, all three of these figures have this little... Uh, card or not a card really it's kind of like a booklet uh that's in a little baggy baggy taped to the back of the card itself and it's really kind of like a a small catalog maybe of the uh, diamond select toys that are available for ghostbusters and it just shows you different ghostbusters products that diamond select has so there's uh there's the back of that and then in the uh, bubble itself you're going to get a uh, figure stand all three of these figures are going to come with a figure stand you're going to get the figure of dana herself and then uh for some reason dana comes with two additional right hands uh i'm not really sure why uh two right hands and no lefts it's weird but so the the one hand is closed but it's kind of got a thumbs out like this and uh, I can't imagine what that is for. That's typically the way you see the thumb posed for somebody that's actually shooting a proton pack, uh, which she doesn't do. So I, I don't really know. It's it's kind of weird why why they molded that hand like that. And then the other hand is just a closed fist with a small hole in there. Uh, and again, I really don't know. Maybe they're going to make an accessory down the line that she can hold. I'm not really sure what it could possibly be. But there you go. Those, those are the accessories for Dana right there. And then, you know, you've got your figure stand right there. Uh, and then we'll open up here real quick. Actually, let's do this. Let's open up uh, Spengler because I want to show off the accessories that come with him. Again, the same thing, the, uh, the little Diamond Select 
uh, booklet in the back there, taped to the back of the card. Uh, and then the accessories that come with Spengler are going to be the exact same that come with Venkman, with one exception. So, of course, we've got our figure stand right here. And then you've got you got the two hands that are already on the figure themselves. They are non-gloved uh, open hands. And then you've got uh, two sets of gloved hands and two additional sets of non-gloved hands. The uh, the gloved hands are in two pieces, and we're going to take a look at those a little closer later. Uh, you've got uh, kind of like a, a open grip hand down here. That's what this pair down here is. And then you've got an open pair of hands here. And then again, for the non-gloved hands, you've got another pair here, one with an open grip. Uh, it works really, this open grip works really well for like holding the radio. Uh, you've got a closed grip here, or like, um, you got an open hand that works for the uh, radio. you got an open grip. Again, this looks like it could work with a proton uh, pack. Uh, and then you've got another uh, right hand here with an open grip. And then one more time, you've got this one right hand here that's all closed with a little hole in there. So I really don't know what that's about. You've also got, obviously, you've got the figure with the proton pack and the thrower. You've got a, uh, a proton stream that you can attach to the gun. You've got your Motorola MT500 radio. And then for Egon, Egon comes with an additional uh, piece of equipment, and that's going to be his PKE meter right there. So uh, let me go ahead and finish getting these guys all out of the package, and then uh, we'll take a closer look at them then. And here we have Egon, Dana, and Peter out of the package, and just look at the, how beautiful and how realistic these figures look. I'm just, I am still amazed by how much detail went into these figures and how much um, like emotion you can get out of the, how, or not emotion, expression. These figures are very, very expressive, and I'm just, I, I'm, I'm just in love with these figures. The, um, the level of detail and everything that just went into these figures are absolutely incredible. So I'm gonna start with her because she is the most difficult to stand, <laughs> and uh, of course that does happen when it's when it's on camera. So uh, we're gonna start here with Dana, and uh, in in pictures online, it looked like she did not look that much like Sigourney Weaver, and I don't know how well that's translating in the camera but in hand she actually does a pretty good job of um uh, or a good representation of the actual actress herself the uh i think they got the jaw they got the jawline pretty good uh the makeup is right on point she does have a little bit of a like smudges like dirt or soot you know after the explosion in the movie uh the hair is right on point they got the hair just right her dress is absolutely gorgeous it looks exactly like what we saw represented in the movie so very very nice figure my only gripe with her is that i have a very hard time trying to get her to stand she's got these very skinny little ankles and uh she while she does have a good range of articulation uh she is hindered by her clothing so it's not like you can really give her any very dynamic poses there's really just one or two things that you can do with her as far as standing her goes uh kind of like how i had her with her arms out which isn't really something she did in the movie but it it, it looks cool uh it, i think it just kind of looks fitting to have her doing something like that uh, or just kind of have her standing there straight, or if you have a little bed or something that you can make her float over, I guess you could do that. But um, as far as articulation goes, uh, you have a ball jointed head, so you've got some up and down, side to side, uh, and uh, tilt. Of course, you are going to be hindered by the hair. Uh, you've got a ball and pin in the uh, shoulder, so you've got in and out, and you've got forward and backwards for rotation. Um, you do not have a rotation at the elbow. You only have a hinge right here for a bend, and then you have a, a rotation at the wrist, and then you've got a hinge at the wrist as well. Uh, you do have a mid torso joint right here. It seems like a ball joint. You can have a, you got a little bit of a crunch as well as some rotation. And then one more time, you have a rotation at the waist. Now the waist joint on all of these figures I have found is very, very tight, and you can hear that right there. Uh, and on all these figures, it has been that tight, which is kind of weird now. It seems like there might be a little bit of movement there. I don't know if that's actual move, intended movement or if that's just me forcing it. But anyway, you've got the rotation there. Uh, oh, on the uh, this is weird. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, I missed uh, I missed the point of articulation on the bicep. You do have rotation on both biceps. Um, the legs only have a hinge, 
so or at the hip, so you can only go forward and backwards. But again, you're going to be somewhat hindered by the uh, dress itself. Uh, no in and out and no rotation. You do have a double hinged knee there and there, and you got again a hinge at the uh, the ankle right there. So the uh, very nice set of articulation. In fact, uh, she actually has less articulation than the other two her other two counterparts in this wave, and still that's a very very nice articulated figure. So um, I, this is one figure where I find myself using the figure stand quite a bit and both ankles have a little port on the bottom of them and you got a small peg on the stand itself i do like the stand the stand is plain there's uh there's no logo or writing or anything on it but i do like these stands because they're relatively small which means they're not going to take up a whole lot of room on your shelves so you're going to be able to get these figures relatively close to each other which is really really nice so i'm going to kind of give her that weird pose that I gave her for whatever reason I just kind of did that pose with her and I just really really liked it so I'm just gonna leave her like that and then we're gonna focus on the guys themselves and uh, hopefully she's not gonna fall uh, again I've had a really hard time getting her to stand so if there's any gripes to go with that figure it would be that she's just difficult to stand so and then we're gonna get into the guys themselves so as you can see here uh, we'll start with Egon and I've got him uh, we'll sit Peter off to the side just a little bit. And uh, Egon's standing here holding his PKE. Now let's take a look at the PKE since this is the one accessory that's additional to this figure from all the others. So there's the PKE and it actually does a very good job of looking like the prop from the movie. And even the uh, the the one from Manny Collector, the Mattel um, PKE that came out a few years ago looks just like that. So that's very cool. Um, small point of contention with this is that the arms are not articulated on this so I, you can't put the arms down uh, they're going to always be on the up position and then also there is nowhere to store it on the belt they didn't give him any loops or anything like that you could shove it in his belt like this the the belts do move so you could do that with him but you should be careful because of the arms and again if these arms could have been uh, articulated so that you could put them away that would have been nice um, now you saw the figure tip over and then you saw something that has probably been one of the biggest point of contentions with this fit with these figures and that is that the thrower keeps popping off of the pack now there's a reason for that and and i see what they were going for and it's actually a really good attempt but it just did not translate well to figure form so if you look at this piece right here, let me see if I can find something to point at it with. Uh, it's typically silver, and in the real prop, this is silver, but it's it's intended to look like there's two little bolts right here, and there's like this, this wedge piece that's at an angle here on the side of the pack. That is the way that the packs slide for the throwers look in real life in the actual props and then on the bottom of the thrower you would have a female version of that you see the two little like a triangle opening right there so in the real life props the way this works is that that triangle would slide down on that wedge until it couldn't slide any further and that's what holds the uh the throwers in place uh, again, for the real life packs, it's a really neat idea, and it's a very awesome um, bit of attention to detail that they did here with these packs. And you know, again, here in this case, it's actually holding. But and, I mean, you just tap this a little bit, and it's gonna fall off. So unfortunately, it just did not translate very well to a toy. So you know, sometimes they hold on fairly well, and sometimes, as as, I, as the case is now. You try and try and try, and it just won't hold. So that has been a point of contention. But talking about the packs, the packs are incredibly detailed. I am absolutely just gaga in love with these packs. And I'm impressed with the fact that they actually have stickers on them. A lot of these stickers that are uh, accurate to the real-life packs are on here. And I'm really, really impressed that they went through the trouble of actually putting the little warning labels and all the stickers that you had danger right here and all those stickers that you would actually see in real life on the pack. Now, typically in the real life pack, this is a copper rod. So usually this looks gold. Uh, they painted it red for some reason, but anyway, no big deal. Um, but yeah, that pack is incredibly, incredibly detailed. Um, the, even so far as to have the Alice frame actually molded in, that is an accurate Alice frame. And then you've got an accurate set of straps that go over the shoulders and the belt themselves. Now, um, 
I don't know. I mean, obviously, these are separate pieces, so it looks like this should be removable. However, um, you know, you could put the arms back to get the shoulder straps out, but then you've got this waist piece that goes all the way around. It looks like there's a little peg right here. If you can see it on the back of the belt right there, it looks like there's a little peg right there. It looks like you should be able to pull this out and have the, uh, the waist piece come off, and then you should be able to take off the pack that way. This is a very, very thin piece of plastic. And every time I pull on it, it you can see the white stress mark right there. So I am just not going to be brave enough to pull that off and risk breaking it. Uh, so I will remain unknowing whether these packs are removable or not because I am just not going to mess with it. Um, the thrower itself, very nice. Again, a lot of detail. You got the little handle grooves right there. It's a very, very accurate Um a little lacking in the paint department, you know, you got a little, uh, in the real life, you got a lot of little knobs here, little silver pieces and bits and whatnot, uh, and some readouts that would be on this side of the thrower here. Uh, but again, not a big deal. This is a very small piece, so I wouldn't expect them to do that anyway. And uh, what they do have here is extremely accurate to the real life piece. Uh, another piece of equipment that you've got here is the radios that were separate, packed separately in the package. And uh, again, look at this. This is incredible how detailed and how accurate that is to the actual Motorola MT500 radios that they used in the first movie. Very, very nice. You got the, little, uh, the, the short antenna with the two knobs on top. Very, very nice. And as you see, as you saw just now, you can just holster it, slide it in and out. Of his holster and his belt the belt also rubber and it looks like it's a separate piece this almost looks like you could uh just slide it down and take it completely off however i would not recommend that because you do have the leg hose the leg hose is uh like this bendy wire that goes from the top of his thigh all the way up and or down and around and it connects to the back of the belt so as much as it looks like you could remove the belt uh, you cannot remove this hose, so you might as well just leave the belt on. And uh, all the detail on the belt, you've got the uh, key fob right there, nice and painted. The uh, the actual latch itself for the belt looks like it's been painted accurately. you got your belt gizmo right there, uh, which is, it was used, uh, there was, they used a very old Casio calculator board for this, and you can see the little red lights on the top and all of that. Very nicely sculpted, looks very, very accurate. Uh, now, typically the cord goes to the back of the belt not right here next to it but you know small uh that's very very small uh gripe right there you got the uh, holster for the actual trap and from what i understand this peg right here the bottom of the trap is hollow so that you can peg it right there so uh i would love to see some traps and get some soon unfortunately the set didn't come with any uh so that's gonna be it for the belt and the pack um as far as the uh, scope for this guy you can see he looks dead on to Harold Ramis. The, the sculpt on this guy is absolutely incredible. He looks great. Uh, the glasses are glued on, and you can see on mine they're a little crooked. So, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. And then again, I, I've mentioned this before. Usually, in toy form, the glasses tend to come out a little thicker than they should, and it kind of takes away from the uh, look of the figure itself. Uh, if you take the glasses off, you can see that's dead on. That's Harold Ramis right there. But I think the glasses kind of take away a little bit from it. Detail on the uniform is absolutely incredible. Nice crisp paint application on the logo and on the name tag. Now, these are going to be a lot of these are going to be shared parts along with Venkman. So, what you're going to be seeing here, you're going to be seeing on Venkman as well, with the exception of the boots where uh, Venkman did not tuck his pants into his boots and uh, where everybody else did. So, that's really going to be the only uh, piece that you're going to be seeing that's different between these two figures uh, aside from the head itself. As far as, uh, oh, and talking about the uh, uniform and the paint apps, uh, you can see that the uniforms do look like they're dirty, like they just got off of a job and uh, they got crap and crud all over them, which is really, really nice. And it just looks very, very realistic. Um, actually, you know, as I'm looking at these now, I'm looking at the two torsos. Let me back this guy just a little bit. And uh, as I'm looking at the torsos, I'm seeing that, let me turn in just a little bit. You can see a little more shirt on Spengler than you can on Venkman. So this top torso piece looks like these are uh, different molds as well. The collars are different, and the uh, the way the zippers are molded are different. So the uh, the upper torso looks like those are different as well. Uh, don't fall on me, Venkman. Come on, you stay right there. 
And I just I just love that pose with Fankman right there with him just holding the radio for the first time he saw uh, Slimer and he just kind of stood there and calling Ray, which is just incredible. Uh, getting into articulation, the head is on a bow joint, so you got to up and down, you got to tilt, you got a uh, rotation. Uh, arms, you got an in and out, and you've got a rotation as well, forward and backwards. You have a rotation at the elbow. The elbow pads are a separate piece, so these guys actually rotate all the way around. And then you also have, uh, along with the rotation at the elbow, you also have a bend. Uh, you just saw the, arm, the the hand fall off, and actually, that works. So the hand has a little ball joint that's going to go into the socket right in there. And then you also have a hinge, so you can do a little bit of bending at the uh, at the wrist itself. Um, to uh, replace the hands, you can see that Venkman is wearing his gloves where Egon is not. So to replace the hands, you simply just pull the hand off like you saw there, and then just replace it with one of the gloved hands. Now, the gloved hands are going to be two pieces and let me get just egon come on stand for me man all right whatever so the uh, glove hands are going to be in two pieces and uh, basically what you've got if you is you have this soft vinyl piece here and this is going to be the cuff of the glove so you just slip that over the uh, the cuff of the uh, uniform right there and then you've got the same type of uh pin and uh, uh hinge on the hand itself or on the wrist itself. So then you just reach in there and just pop that guy in and presto, now he's got his uh, gloves on. So we'll go ahead and do that on the other hand as well. Just pop that guy off, put his cuff on and then put his gloved hand in. And now uh, Egon has his gloves on, so he's ready to uh, battle some ghosts. Moving on with the articulation, you saw that there is again a uh, upper torso uh, articulation here looks seems like a ball joint because you got a rotation and you got some of a uh, bit of an ab crunch, and then you've got your uh, hip or waist rotation rather. Uh, I've loosened it up a little bit on this guy because they just seem so tight. Uh, the uh, hips. You have a forward and backwards on the hip, and you also have an in and out, which is really really nice. You have a rotation at the thigh. You have a double hinge at the knee. You have a rotation. No, you don't have a rotation. I thought you had a rotation at the boot, but you don't. Uh, but you do have an ankle tilt. So the articulation is going to be the same between the two figures. Now, uh, now that I've got this guy with his gloves, I'm going to go ahead and give him his uh, thrower so that we can take a look at the um, proton stream itself. So you can just uh, position his hands in there. Whatever's easier for you. Uh, I find that it's easier to just kind of stick the thrower in like that and then pop his hands in. So there you go. So uh, he's got his thrower in his hands. He's ready to fire off. And now we're going to go into the proton streams themselves. Let me see if I can get him standing. If not, I may just need to recruit the help of one of the stands that came with him. There you go. So we got the proton streams. And now the way I understand it, these are a bit improved from the streams that came with the first wave. Uh, you've got a nice orange stream, and it's nice and wavy, just like you saw in the movie, with some blue electricity going around it, and then some crackles here and there. Really nice detail. Now, from the way I understand it, the ones that we got with the first wave looked just like this. And there isn't really a hole in the thrower to peg this in anywhere or anything like that. These guys came with this additional uh, clear piece. So this has a hole in the front right here for the small peg. So you just peg that guy right in there. And then the circle part on the bottom, this goes all the way around three quarters of the way. And then it's got a small gap. So you're going to position this over the tip of the thrower with the gap facing this uh, wire connector right there. So that's going to go right in there. And then you can just uh, rotate the uh, beam any way you want, you know, and just position that. And there you go. There, There's the uh, proton pack shooting off the stream, which just looks really, really nice. <laughs> These guys just keep falling on me. But uh, yeah, check that out. That just looks absolutely incredible. The level of detail on these figures is just so, so nice. And um, this is this is the first set of these that I pick up. And now I'm chomping at the bit to go pick up uh, the, the, the first wave because I just got to have Ray and Winston and Tully. I just, I just got to find them. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to leave Egon with his uh, Proton Stream shooting just like that. And then uh, we're going to bring in Venkman. And you're not going to see a whole lot of difference here from what we just saw on uh, Egon, except with the uh, the head scope right there, which, again, I think did a really, 
really good job of portraying uh, Bill Murray and the way he looked back in the day. He's got the messy hair, the receding hairline. Just looks very, very nice. Uh, and then other than that, the only other difference is going to be that the boots are uncuffed. But the articulation is going to be the same, uh, and it's pretty much going to do anything that the other figures can do, this guy is going to do. So, and I just love posing him like this, with that, that, that just kind of that slouch, the I don't believe what I'm seeing, even though it's in front of me, and he just kind of slouching, but at the same time surprised, but pretending not to be surprised from the first time he saw Slimer. I just think it's such such a great scene. The The hotel scene from that first movie is probably my favorite scene. It's the first time that you got to see the guys in uniform and you got you got to see the equipment working. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just so much good comedy in that scene. So we'll bring these guys in uh, closer together like this for one last shot. And uh, it's a shame that Dana's kind of getting a little bit blocked there by the... Uh, by the Proton stream. But there you go. Very, very nice, highly detailed figures. I'm just absolutely mesmerized by these guys. I'm so happy that I found them. Like I mentioned, uh, these are the retail release versions of the figure. So they do not come with any of the diorama pieces. Uh, I found these at Toys R Us for $13, which I think is a really, really good price for these figures. So I think with that, we've pretty much covered the Diamond Select 7-inch uh, Ghostbusters figures wave two. What did you think of these figures and what would you like to see me review next? Let me know by leaving me a comment. Give me some thumbs up. Subscribe and share with your friends if you like what you see. And I'll talk to you next time.